Fuck yeah, bro. You know? each and every day. Thank you. I would also like to remind you that this film is eligible for the Girls People's Choice Midnight Madness Award. This is one of ten films that can receive this award. It does a lot for them and really can help with distribution. So please vote. If, you're, uh, if, if you really enjoy this film tonight, you can vote via the TIFF app or you can drop a ticket into the ballot box. And uh, we would then also like to thank Raven Banner Entertainment for providing us with this film. Yes, thank you, Raven Banner. I would also like to thank all of you for being here. You've been here, uh, so many of you, every night, and that's been terrific. But tonight, I'm really excited because this isn't like most Midnight movies. A lot of people, when I talk to them about Midnight Madness, they just think it's blood and guts, uh, you know, and not to say that this movie might not have some of that, but, you know, I, this to me feels like a true midnight experience. Something that's not just about the cheering, but sort of about the reflection that you experience. It's a real trip, um, and I'm so excited to share this trip with all of you. Uh, a few weeks ago, David Lynch said, we all live in a dream, and tonight I feel like we're about to enter another dream. A dream dreamt by Seth A. Smith. Please take a stand. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> uh, this is what, this is my birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I'll change my birthday to this day. <laughs> Thanks everybody so much for coming to this. It's uh, yeah, wow, well, it's such a small movie and and, uh, and it's become so big in a way. And uh, I have so many people to thank. Uh, I wrote a big list and I put it in my pocket and it got crumpled up and it kind of merged with some pocket lint and some other stuff. <laughs> and I I can't read it. <laughs> But right. most of all, thank you to Nancy Yurick. Uh, thanks to you. Uh, thank you to uh, Darcy Spado, uh, my screenwriter. Uh, a lot of good ideas from the book when they work. So. And uh, Rob Cottrell, thank you. He's, he's been a little bit of a shock and zone, Rob Cottrell. And uh, yeah, and the Raven Banner crew has been kind of on board with us from the beginning. And, that's been a big help as well. And thanks to all the Indiegogo supporters and everybody else who helped out with this film. And, and, and especially the cast and crew who made this thing happen. Uh, Danica and Terry are here tonight and hope to see them up here. Yeah, so thanks so much and I hope you enjoy the film. Thank you, Let's enter Seth's dream. Let's enter the present. <laughs> Please put your hands together for Seth A. Smith! And Seth, there's some folks in the room that probably should be on stage. Yeah, yeah, okay, let's see. Just 
Anybody who hopes is, you should come up. Nancy's here. <laughs> Darcy, the writer. Anita, Kat. Now they're coming up. Yeah, so. Uh, go back and go. No, I won't do the call. Yes, I will. This is Paul Hammond here, and he's coming up. He did all the, the makeup effects. Uh, we have a cinematographer, Paul Buckley here. We have Terrence Murray, the scariest guy I know. <laughs> all right, cool. Um, the one person who isn't here because it's past his bedtime <laughs> is Woodrow Graves, uh, your son, the star. That's <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Hopefully you'll hear it. Was this, uh, I, I'm just so, in, I want to start with, with Woodrow just because what's, what are the challenges of directing a two-year-old <laughs> in a horror movie? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, why people avoid using uh, two-year-olds because uh, they're impossible to work with. You know? <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we, we had that in mind. Going into making this, I wanted to make a horror film from a two-year-old's perspective because I hadn't seen it done. You usually just see the back of their heads, or or they they have voiceovers by some old man. And uh, yeah, we 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 had worked on some other um, we worked on another short film in in, in this way kind of, and uh, we've done millions of home videos. And he's very desensitized to cameras right now, uh, during filming this, so he wasn't staring at the lens the whole time, and uh, yeah, so he actually knows how to work the camera much better than I do. Uh, well, what kind of strategies did you use? Yeah, no, uh, okay, so perform some of the sequences, or even interact with a scene that might be kind of intense or scary. Right, yeah, no, it was all real. No. <laughs> No, oh, yeah, it, there's just a lot of camera tricks. I, uh, you know, we, we'd shoot Terry chasing me for a while, and then, you know, I think the running, the chasing scenes with Woody would be, you, he was chasing you guys around the table, and there's lots of voiceovers and camera tricks. And yeah, a lot of audio of tricks. We were probably recording audio from other times. Yeah, we did, a, we, we built this ADR voiceover tent in my basement, and, uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. That was actually pretty interesting. He came up with a lot of lines. <laughs> now, I'm interested to um, your re relationship with Darcy as a writer. Um, the story came from you, but you wrote the screenplay. How, how, how did that screenplay develop? And then again, with the fact that you worked with the two-year-old, so much of it, you know, potentially is improvised just based on what is happening. So what was that process like? Were you present for filming? I was there for, uh, I guess, three days. I have a very small part in the movie where I fall in the water. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, he, he, we wrote lines for him, and he learned some of those lines. They were some of his first words in life, probably. Like the cell phone scene, for example, which uh, we were all sort of crying while he did that in real life. Um, yeah, so I don't know. The script had some openings for improvisation. There's a documentary element to this film, I think. Uh, but, you know, we tried to make the scenes all have a bit of tension, try to put some ambience in there, and just give it a general tone. And, uh, it, yeah, it ended up following the script uh, pretty closely. Um, Woodrow does a lot of ad-lib, tells a lot of jokes that I could never tell him, right? So. He's surprisingly good at line reading, so he is just, you know, the, the stage in his development where he is really into English <laughs> and learning it and mimicking. I've got a few more questions, but let's go through to the audience if people have them. Um, yes, and far back. Um, where exactly is the location of this? Could we know this has been pressed in? It's an Airbnb, I think. Right? Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you discover the house? And, and was that something you knew in advance of the story? Uh, yeah, it's, you definitely can't visit it because uh, they will kill me. But <laughs> they almost didn't let me use it. No, I'm 
It was it, we, you know, it's awesome that Airbnb exists. So you can look at 50 houses online and be like, yeah, that one looks good, you know. But I, I grew up in a, a coastal uh, community, a very small town where, where uh, my parents converted a barn into a very unusual structure, and uh, yeah, it was kind of had that in mind, and we saw this one, and it was. Uh, they weren't renting it anymore for the season. Actually, they decided that they wouldn't Airbnb it ever again. They just kind of wanted, yeah, they wanted, no, before it, they just were like, yeah, I think we want to live here now because, you know, people mess around here. And, uh, yeah, and we just, I don't know, yeah, I somehow convinced them that it wasn't, I, I, I didn't tell them it was a horror movie, it's yes. a mystery and it's starring a child. <laughs> <laughs> I use the same strategy. I, 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 know, I, know, I know what you mean. But yeah, we were so lucky. We, we, we needed it. It was bigger than what we thought we'd need, but uh, yeah, it, we were able to live there in all these weird pockets. And it has all these trap rooms. <laughs> how, how long did the, uh, was the shoot? Um, like, I guess it was bound by also just capturing moments with uh, Woodrow, you couldn't necessarily predict a schedule. It was like two weeks. Really? Oh, wow. <laughs> we had to do it quick because his uh, he ran out of steam for it pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, the paint marbling is so beautiful in this film. What inspired <laughs> um, Yeah, I just, I always liked marbling. I was a I mean, I, I guess I learned about it. I was a marbler's assistant as my first job. Uh, and, <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> this is, I glued pieces of, yeah, trippy paper to cards. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I guess people bought those cards. But, so, I just thought it would make, yeah, a nice uh, aesthetic in, in on film. And, uh, yeah, Danica was an artist, and, and uh, we, I, I definitely had a vision for what I, I wanted to do with it, but uh, yeah, it really developed when you got your hands on it. And we also were able to, luckily enough, get these really cool world-class marblers to fly in from uh, Detroit, was it? And uh, yeah, called BL Visuals. And uh, yeah, I, I, I basically was like, yeah, I'm really a marble person. Look, this is, I've never been done. Uh, it, well, these guys have been doing it for a year, a year before we shot or something, and they, they've been doing it at music festivals. They didn't, I think, we were the they, they first they, feature. You were the first whole, whole, yeah. whole body, too. Yeah. It's the first whole body to ever be marble. First new male. First male. <laughs> it, because it is a, it's a re, relatively recent invention with uh, non toxic paints and stuff. So, marbling's been around forever. But. Uh, do we have another question from the audience? Where? Oh, right there. Uh, can you talk about the, the soundtrack, particularly the opening and closing overture? It's really amazing. Oh, thank you. Oh, I don't know. I was just... Uh, it's important, right? Yeah, no. I, I, it, it's nice to do this kind of music that, you know, Nancy and I are in a band called Dog Day, and we, you know, we've played a lot of pop music and done a bunch of albums, and it's kind of nice to try out something more cinematic. Did you write the piece before you had shot the footage, or did you let the footage have inspired the piece? Uh, no, I, I did the, the music was very, uh, it, it came at the end. I just, uh, I don't know, I can never decide on what to do, and then I just, I was listening to a lot of Bach, and uh, also Woodrow has like this playlist on, on her phone uh, of, what is it, it's a, uh, it's called Space Disco from the 70s. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it was kind of an amazing sound. Yeah, inspired it. There was a question at the back. Yeah, right there. Uh, this is for Danica. I read this is your first on screen is it feature or. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah. <coughs> congratulations, it was great. Um, how is it so much of the film resting on you and a relationship with like a two year old who's not your two year old? Yeah, um, yeah, it felt like. Uh, uh, you know, for a lot of the movie, there's sort of like a subtle sort of two-person thing going on. Um, and I feel like a lot of the visuals sort of drive it for a long time. And then, uh, yeah, but I mean, we just tried to make sure that we 
had enough like friendship chemistry off screen to uh, be comfortable in that sort of role. And uh, so yeah, kind of um, yeah, it was challenging, you know. But uh, I think it pieced together. There was, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you guys are really, I mean, he's, he's a pretty social guy, but you guys really definitely connected, and that was helpful. And it helped that we all live there, you know, it's like we're kind of a family. And, and really, yeah. yeah, we couldn't leave the house for two weeks, so that kind of helped, actually. <laughs> the other effect I really love in this film is during the um, sequences with the reduced aspect ratio, um, the image often sort of um, looks like liquid or billows, like um, a curtain. How did you achieve those effects? Oh, it was just, uh, we were just uh, projecting on milk and, uh, and like pools of white paint. You shoot, shoot the sequence and then project on milk? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just wanted to see what it looked like. <laughs> well, thank you for that. We have time for one more question. Right there. Um, what uh, zodiac sign are all you guys? Yeah, oh, said, right. Uh, it goes down the line. line. I'm the most evenly balanced. I'm a Libra. <laughs> I'm a Scorpio. I'm a Cancer. I'm a Pisces. Virgo, of course. Yeah. Cancer. Sagittarius. Whoa, right. No, Give it up to the filmmakers behind their presence. Remember, you have the chance to vote for your film. For the film. So please do so. Tomorrow night, things get bloody.